In my previous video, I spoke about the difference between calculating the short circuit currents and the fault currents at the design stage. In this video, I'm going to give a worked example of how to calculate the short circuit currents and the fault currents for a final circuit. And this is going to be for a 16 amp radial circuit wired in 2.5 mm twin and earth. So the first thing that we do is we look at the on-site guide to get the values for milliohms per meter for the size of cable. Now in the chart in the on-site guide it gives you values for different combinations of cables. So there's values for 2.5 and 1.5 if you've got a 2.5 mil twin earth with a reduced size CPC. And also there is a value for 2.5 and 2.5 and that's what we use for the R1 plus RN. So we take the 2.5 and 1.5 when calculating the R1 R2 and we take the 2.5 and 2.5 when we're calculating the R1 plus Rn. So this is for a 16 amp radial circuit wired in 2.5, 1.5 mil twin and earth cable. We know that the ZE for this installation is 0.131 and the PFC is 3.2 Ka. So first we, we're going to do the R1 plus Rn. And so we take the values for milliohms per meter from the on-site guide and we multiply that by the length and then we multiply that by a correction factor of 1.2, which is to adjust for the operating temperature. And then we divide by 1000. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the values for milliohms per meter for the cable, which for a 2.5 mil uh, line and neutral, the value is 14.82. We multiply by that by the length, which for this circuit is 10.8 meters. And then we multiply by the correction factor. And then we divide by a thousand. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.192 ohms. So that's the R1 plus Rn for the circuit. Now, as we're doing short circuit, what we do is we take the PFC, which is 3.2 Ka, or 3,200 amps, and we're going to convert that into ohms. So to find the ZESC, which is basically the ZE short circuit, which is the loop between line and neutral, we divide the voltage by the PFC. So that's going to be 230 volts divided by 3,200. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.071 ohms. So then what we need to do is we need to find the ZSC, which is the impedance between line and neutral for the final circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the ZESC to the R1 plus RN. So that's going to be 0 0.071 plus 0 0.192 ohms. And that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.263 ohms. So that is the impedance between line and neutral for the final circuit. So then to find the short circuit current, the ISC, what we need to do is we need to divide the voltage by the ZSC. So it's just simple Ohm's law, it's voltage divided by a resistance for the circuit. So that becomes 230 divided by 0 0.263, which gives us an which gives us an answer of 874.52 amps. So if we do the same thing again now for the fault current for the circuit. So the first thing that we're going to do for the fault current is we're going to calculate the R1 plus R2. And as I mentioned before, the difference between doing this and the short circuit is now we, we, we've got a reduced size CPC. So we, we're going to take the values for milliohms per meter for the 2.5 and 1.5 from the on-site guide. So that's milliohms per meter multiplied by length, multiplied by the correction factor of 1.2 and divide by 1,000. So it's the same equation before, but just the difference in the value for milliohms per meter where we've got that reduced size CPC. So the value for this um, on this occasion is 19.51. We multiply that by 10.8, which is the length of the circuit. And then we multiply that by 1.2 
and divide by a thousand. So the ZE for this installation is 0 0.131 ohms. And as I'm sure you already know, the formula for calculating the ZS is uh, ZS is equal to ZE plus R1 plus R2. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the ZE and we're going to add it to our calculated R1 plus R2. So that's going to be 0.131 plus 0.252, which gives us a ZS of 0.383 ohms. So now to find the fault current, the IPF, we're going to divide the voltage by the ZS. So that's 230 volts divided by 0.383 which gives us an answer of 600.522 amps so you'll notice the difference between the short circuit current and the fault current as I mentioned before the short circuit current is usually much higher Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please subscribe to see more videos like this.